write a short note on the French Revolution for five marks. Describe the four chambers of the heart and explain how it pumps blood to different parts of the body for eight marks. And today we have the MCQ pattern examination that is a multiple choice question examination. So do you get scared when someone says Kal ki exam pattern hogi MCQ pattern? Do you get confused between the four options? Do you feel that all the four options look similar? Don't worry guys, in this video, we'll be discussing eight tricks to help you solve MCQs. So hi guys, it's Dr. Parth Palan here from KM Hospital. Let's begin the video. So point number one, the approach to the questions. So we have to attempt all the questions in the first go, which we are really sure about. And the ones which we really doubt or we don't know the answer to, we skip them. For example, the first question, you know the answer, so you tick mark. Second question, you know the answer, you tick mark. Third question, you don't know, so you leave it. Just leave it. Now the fourth question, now the fourth question is the dicey one. The fourth question is the one whose answer you know, but you are going to take time to either recollect the answer or it's a lengthy question or it's a little tricky one. So 99% of the students, what they do is, they are like, abhi ke abhi we can solve. Like they know that, I mean, you all know that you can solve this question, but what these students do is that, okay, now itself will take that much time and solve this question. This is wrong because in all these MCQ exams, time is the key. And when you leave such questions at the back of your mind, automatically your mind will keep, you know, thinking about those questions. Like for example, out of 100 questions, you attempt those 50 and 50 you weren't able to solve. So those 50 questions will keep running at the back of your mind. And I'm sure that in the second attempt, out of those 50 questions, 50% 50 of the questions you will surely be able to attempt. So the tricky ones, skip in the first go. Point number two, read the questions very carefully. These MCQ exams came into existence only and only for confusing the students by making them believe that all the four options look correct. So it's up to us. The trick here is with us that we have to read the question very, very carefully with utmost concentration. There are going to be words like, you know, all of the following are true, except then which of the following is not true. And obviously there is going to be the third kind of thing like which of the following is not false. So then we have to think like not false is equal to true. And then there's going to be, you know, whenever in the answer, if you feel that option A is correct. So please read all the options. You know, you should not miss that the D option was all of the above. And that is how you miss the question. No, no silly mistakes allowed. Because obviously then in the end we say, Arey yaar, oh silly mistake ho gaya. Nahi toh, main toh rank one hi aane wala tha. Point number three, don't rush. However easy you might find the question, however easy like you might think that, you know, you know the answer, don't hurry in marking the answer. See, because I remember during my MHCT examination after 12th standard, two questions I marked in a hurry in the other OMR, in the other box. So please, please don't repeat such mistake. Point number four, solve the easier section of the question paper first. Like for example, in NEET UG examination, we have physics, chemistry, and biology. So the first section to be solved is biology. See, because biology, either you know the answer or you don't know the answer. It's not like you have to think something, you know, out of the box. So make it a point to start with biology, finish the biology questions first, and then go to chemistry and the last keep physics. Because in physics, you are required to solve. You are required to think and apply those formulae and then get to the answers. So keep the uh, lengthiest, keep the toughest part of the question paper for the end. Point number five, how to solve a lengthy question. So according to the system that we described in point number one, the approach, if there's any lengthy question in the first attempt, we are going to skip the question. But what when you come to the lengthy question in a second go? So for any lengthy question, read the last line of the question. See, because there can be a big para and the last line of the question can, and both of them can be very, very unrelated, you know, like A is the father of B, B is the sister of C. Now tell me, what is the value of pi? I have seen such questions, guys. It's not a joke and legit, the, it's quite possible. It's most of the time it happens that all the lengthy questions, the first, the whole para doesn't have any, any relevance to the question being asked. So be careful. Point number six, practice MCQs. To solve an MCQ paper, we need to practice as many MCQs as possible. So solve all the past year question papers because all these past year question papers will exactly tell you how the examiner has been tricking all these students since, all, since these past years. And more than the number of MCQs, try, on, uh, try learning the concept, like revising the concept of the MCQs which have gone wrong. Because one MCQ can only get, uh, you one MCQ write an exam, but a concept can get you 10 MCQs write an exam. So make sure your concepts are very, very clear. 
Point number seven, how many questions to attempt? So the answer lies in two parts. So part number one, when there is no negative marking. So there has to be no doubt whatsoever that when there is no negative marking, all the questions have to be attempted. And how we are going to do this? By, you know, ruling out logically. Listen to this line very carefully. Normal students find hints from that question itself. Okay, normal students find hints from the question, but legends find hints from all the questions. That is the whole question paper is a hint for the legends. So basically what the toppers do is that, uh, you know, for the specific question, they keep the question at the back of their mind and they try searching for answers in the next question. Like there is sure, you know, that unit, unit of the measurement or something on the other hand, they will all, always get from some other question. So that has to be, you know, you have to have an open mind for that. And by this approach, you will be able to rule out from the four options, you will be able to rule out two options. And then when you have two options, what do we do? We go on the gut feeling. You know, 60% of the times our gut feeling, our intuition is right. And my friend had once told me that whenever in doubt, choose C. Now, I don't know how, how this is going to work for you all, but you know, B or C are safe options. So you can go with B or C. And now coming to the second part, that is when, when there's negative marking, how many questions to attempt? This is the trickiest part of an MCQ. So we have to follow the risk benefit ratio. What the risk benefit ratio says that out of the four options, if you are able to, you know, rule out two options and only two options are left, you go for it, attempt the question. But out of the four questions, co questions, if you are able to rule out only one question and you are confused between three options, leave the question. It's always better to leave the question. But again, there's a catch that <clears throat> risk benefit ratio also says that say, for example, there are 20 questions and you have attempted 15. So five remain. So now if there is plus four minus one, so even if you get one question right out of those five questions, so one into four plus four, and then again, minus four. So even if one question you get right, it, it boils down to zero. But if you get two questions right by chance, so two into four, eight, eight minus three, five. So your score will be plus five and plus five and zero, there's five mark card difference, which can actually boost your rank exponentially. In fact, a study has even found that all the toppers of the exam of these exams attempt more than 90% of the questions. And now we have the eighth point, the most important point, the most important trick to crack any MCQ examination is being calm and being confident. The calmer you are, the lesser blunders you're likely to make. See in this MCQ examination, the examiner not only tests your knowledge, but also he also tests your composure, your attitude, your approach towards the exam. So that's why you must have noticed, you know, that all these MCQ exams, usually the first five to six questions are always difficult. Usme hi 50% or 70% collapse ho jate hain. See, like what many people think is that, oh shit, the paper is going to be so difficult. Maine to kuch padha hai nahi, abhi to kuch nahi aayega. When you have those first 10 questions, when you don't get the answer, that is, that is where we, we have to be calm. See, we have a system in place, like I had given you, like all the difficult questions, we have to skip. We are not going to bother we are going to be positive that even after 10 questions, 15 questions, we are not able to solve. We'll surely get, you know, a patch of questions which, which we will be able to solve. So we have a system in place. We go by that system and we kill the examination. So be confident guys. Think of an MCQ examination as a boon. See, because when they were theory examination, so the per student with, you know, good handwriting, good presentation, who had the ability to fill pages and pages, that student used to be a topper, but now times are changing. Only the most deserving student has to win. And I know you are the most deserving one, guys. All the best, all the very best, kill it. And um, if you have any doubts, please leave it in the comment section below and I'll try my best to answer all the doubts for you. And please share this video with as many students as possible because I'm sure they'll benefit from this. And thus, the purpose of making this video shall be fulfilled for me. And please don't forget to subscribe to my channel because my mission is very simple to help each and every student in every possible way that I can. And let's fulfill it together, guys. Let's do it. Thank you so much.